Noika. Tell me who's eating the cottage cheese. Mm. Hmm? And the kitten. Ah, Let's go the kitten. Tina, those are violets. They're hiding, sort of. They sure are small, but we discovered them. Papa, Papa! Mm. How are you? Fine, Papa. How's your day been? Good, thanks. Good. Let's go, Maine. Let's go and say goodnight to the stars. Are we going to bed? Mm -hmm. Contemplating himself and loving himself. He was just fine by himself. Because, you see, Maine, God is not alone. He's a bit like me, you, your mama, and Felicina, too. We love each other, no? God is like this. God loves always. This is what he was doing before he created the world. Now comes, comes number one. Oh. Good. Now let's see. What is the commandment that's most important? And love your Lord, your God, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> the winner is mine of the farmhouses. Take this. Here is your prize. I ask you to say a little prayer for the Pope. You know, he left Rome and took refuge at Gaeta. I know these things are too big for you to understand, but you must always remember to pray for him, all right? We must plant our selves deeply rooted in God. That's right, mine. Plant ourselves deeply rooted in God. Papa, it's as if we're like a tree, and God is the earth where the tree is rooted. Is that right? Hmm. Papa, tomorrow's my first Holy Communion. I can't get Jesus out of my mind. It's time for sleep now. Under the covers. Come on. Good night. After tomorrow, it will always be like this. I'll imagine that Jesus has entered me through the sacred host, or that it's Jesus whom I will receive. How I do want to please our Jesus. Every day a little more. We know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough, children. Go to sleep. Mm, let's have a minute of prayer.
nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accipite et manducate, ex hoc omnis, hoc est enim corpus me. Jesus, you are my Lord and my God. So I am the tree, and you are the earth where I plant my roots. As for a present, now's the time to ask. What do you mean a present, Papa? Yes. Let me think. Well, for example, did you see the lovely dress Teresa had on in church the other day? Her father bought it for her at the fair at Montalteo. Will you take me, Papa? Please, I beg you. You know how much I love Catholic I'll take you. Thank I'll you. take you. Philatina! Papa's <laughs> taking me to the fair. Mine sure has good taste. And she always wants to prove her worth, but I don't want to get her hopes up too much. Oh, but she already has. The other day she said to Petronilla, I tell you that new bodice must suit me, must look good on me, not on my mama. Don't tell her I told you, please. <laughs> oh, no. The Valpanasca and Mornese are too confining. My little Maine needs to broaden her horizons to meet other people. But don't worry, I'll look after her. Gentlemen and for little ladies. Do you like them? Yes. Out there. Say hello. Look how pretty these are. Yes, they sure are nice. I wish I had boots like these. So remember. Don't worry, Father. You know, the other day I saw quite a few animals passing by. Which ones? I saw ducks and horses, too. Papa bought them for me. I thought that I had gone to heaven. But now...
Don Pesterino is right. It's more wonderful being than seeming to be. It certainly is. continue like this, I won't be able to find men to work in the vineyards. Do you know what they say? That girl works too hard. We can't keep up with her. Aren't you happy, Papa? <laughs> You're just like your mother, impetuous and impatient. But I'm also like you, Papa, aren't I? Yes. You have good sense, and you know what you want. But whenever you judge someone or something, what does the priest always say? You have to temper it with humility, with tenderness and kindness. Otherwise, you will become hard-headed. <laughs> if someone contradicts me, I get all red like hot coals. And even my lips quiver. Or else I get such a serious look on my face, and then I just run off. And what does the priest say? Don Pistorino doesn't let me get away with anything. He has examples that are right on the mark. He chats with everyone he meets, he does. He explains the gospel everywhere, in the streets, in the homes, and obviously in church. <laughs> <laughs> you should always listen to him, because he's a man of God. You know, he studied at Genoa. He can certainly teach you many things. Listen to him. who have made a vow of virginity for one year. And I know one who even did it for two years. I don't understand why one has to ask permission to take a vow of virginity. And I don't understand why you should for any amount of time. I have already taken it forever. I don't think I'm wrong about this. So then why for a year? Or even two years? With God, love is much simpler. And I chose God forever. <laughs> From morning till night, I do everything with him and for him. I do everything for love, everything.
shouldn't you be sleeping as well? You should be asleep yourself. Go to bed. Don't worry about me. Felicina, go to bed. I'll finish this off and be right in. Sleep so that tomorrow morning we can wake up early and go to Mass. And you? I'll finish here. So tomorrow when we return from Mass, as I've already done my part. And Papa can start working. Mind? Mm. May I ask you a question? Ask me. You help Mom in the kitchen with the laundry. You help Papa in the vineyard. You teach me and the little ones to do the housework, because you always do the heavier work. And so what? It's just that while you're doing all of this, you pray. Why? How may we open the treasures of paradise if we don't pray? Mine. How many keys do you need to open the treasures of paradise? <laughs> no. It's prayer that's my treasure, not the things I do. Now, good night, Filichina. Good night. It's past midnight. What are you doing out at this time of night? We're on our way to church. At this hour? It'll give us more time to pray. church and we couldn't even lift our shoes from the ground. <laughs> we could hardly move our feet forward. <laughs> and that time when I was so soaked by the rain that I couldn't let myself be seen by the priest, I had to sit far away from his confessional. <laughs> Jesus, when I'm here in church, it's always summer. I think about you constantly. I live everything with you. And I do it with so much love, always. You are like the water of the stream in the valley, like the water of the Roverno. Just like a bunch of grapes attached to the vine, I cling to you. For a while now, after dinner, Maine disappears. <laughs> Who knows what she's up to, that girl? <laughs> to be honest, they all disappear, you know? Even the little ones. Let's go look for him. Jesus is there in the tabernacle of the church, and we're keeping him company. Try and repeat after me. Jesus, you are the source of everything. Jesus, you are, you are the, the source, source of, everything. of everything. Jesus, you're like a sun that never sets. Jesus, you're like a sun that never sets. Jesus, you are the true God and the one true man. Jesus, you are the true God and the one true man. Angelina Macagno has returned from Genoa. 
Don Pistorino sent her to study to become a teacher. Everybody says that she'll be the one to teach the girls. Apparently, she told her cousin that she wants to become an in-house nun. Not only her, there are others who want to become in-house nuns. They have already talked to Don Pesterino, and he agrees. I would just love to be part of that group. <laughs> if I may have your attention, friends. Please. We are here to celebrate the birth of the association. But first of all, to thank Don Pesterino for the important role that he gives us women in the life of the parish. Today begins the association of the daughters of Mary Immaculate. There are five of you, from the eldest to the youngest. You will be the leaven among the people of Mornese. Leaven with your example, always. And when it's needed, with your words as well. And you will live fully the values of the gospel. She will be your guide. The path you are to follow will be hers. She will be the example. With you, my tender and only bridegroom, I will be wed. It's you I wish to love, and I will leave everything for you. I, I want, want to live, live my, my life, life by helping, helping those who are in need and, and guide, guide them towards your everlasting love. There we go. <laughs> Good boy. I want to love. For you, I leave everything. With you, my tender and only bridegroom, I will be wed. Come on, put the jewels where they belong. I'll run ahead and light the fire. They're worse off than we are. <gasps> Rather, let's say a prayer that God touches and changes their heart. <gasps> Wouldn't it be better if we went to live in the village? What if something terrible had happened to any of us? Bring everything up here. Yes, put those in there. Jesus, I can no longer see you from here. 
but I'm just a few steps away from you. I haven't stopped since this morning, and I went a quarter of an hour without thinking of you. Never again, a quarter of an hour without thinking of you. Mama, I'm going to see the priest. Do you need anything? No, but try not to be late. Soon it will be dark. So you're in Monese. How's your family coping? Papa and my older brothers have to go every day to the Valponasca. Sometimes Mama goes as well. The little ones are happy, I must say. And you? Must you ask? You know I'm happy to live close by to the church. I don't miss my little window. Mine, I wanted to talk to you. In the village, there are some severe cases. Nobody outside of the afflicted families knows anything about this. We must all pray together. The French troops returning from the war have passed not too far from where we are, and they may have left us with something far more serious than we're able to imagine now. Don't, Mr. Reno, what am I to prepare for? You must tell me, please. I can't tell you anymore. Mine, you're to stay calm. I can always rely on you, I'm certain. Or rather, God can always rely on you. Don't forget that. I'm scared. People are dying. They say that it's typhoid fever. Maie, Maie, please hurry. The priest is at our house and he's talking with Papa. You realize how contagious this is, don't you? Sending Maie to care for our relatives with typhoid? No, 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 Father, it's impossible. How can I take care of the house all alone? And the children as well? And the vineyards? I can't stop everything. Mayin works as hard as three laborers put together. Listen, I can't send Mayin. But if she really wants to go, I have no objection. I'll go, Papa. Mama, I'll go. Those people do need me. They have all recovered, and soon you'll be well again, too.
dump is Torino. <clears throat> Would you please bring me every day the Eucharist? We should have told them no. <gasps> but you had to insist. Well, what are you saying? But just think what a nice gift it would be if, if I were to die. A martyr by love. <clears throat> I can't bear the thought of not having her here anymore. This house seems so empty. used to say to her, please slow down, my Ian. She's my first child. Will she get better? And if so, how much? Papa, don't say that. Certainly she will get better. Let's pray. Let's pray just like she did. Holy Mary has looked after you and has left you with us so that no one in our house cries. Jesus, I can no longer get up at dawn. I can no longer do the heavy work, come to Mass in the early morning. If you give me a little more life, please let all this be forgotten. I am happy just to be remembered by you. In the spring, will my strength return? Life returns. Everything is reborn. But not my strength. I, Maine of the farmhouses, Maine stronger than her father's laborers. God, what do you want from me? Help me to understand. Give me a sign. Show me the way. If I knew how to work as a dressmaker, just think of all the girls I could rally together, how I could help them. I could keep them off the streets from danger, and I could bring them closer to you, Mary. What's happening? What is it that I'm seeing? Trust them to me. Mine! I must speak to you. 
But straight away, not here. Let's go. I think I understand now that the Lord wants the two of us to take care of the girls in Mornese. Actually, Mother Mary wants it, and I'm certain of it. Holy Mary, the two of us, did she tell you this? Yes, in a certain sense she did tell me. Listen, Petronilla, you're not strong. You can't work in the vineyards, and I too, after the illness, can't do it anymore. Yet both of us care very much for many of the girls in Mornese. Isn't that so? Yes! Of course, but what will we tell them? I've given it some thought. Don't you think that if we knew how to sew, we could actually succeed? You want to learn to be a dressmaker? We want to learn to become dressmakers. <laughs> Me too, but how? Who will want to teach us how to sew? Valentino Campi. He's a good tailor and an excellent Christian. Yes. Yes, maybe you're right. <laughs> but promise me we will only sew for women. Promise? Listen carefully. We will learn to sew to keep the girls away from harm's way, to better themselves, to bring them closer to Jesus and to love him. But how do we care for them and how do we feed them all? We will live off of our work. Just look at those two. Everyone's talking about them. They're not working in the fields, but are learning to sew, and from a man, no less. Can you believe it? Who do they think they are? Do you know what some of the daughters of the Immaculate are saying? <laughs> I've heard. The group doesn't want them around anymore. Those two do what they want. They think they're better than the rest. The dressmaker is moving away and leaving her work to us. Soon we will have our very own workroom. Angela Macaño made me a promise. Maybe she could rent a room to us. <laughs> Mayin, maybe it's just an idea of mine, but it seems to me that some of the daughters of the Immaculate are jealous of you. Of me? But why is that? They say that you're too enterprising and you only want to be successful. <laughs> I only want to give the girls a helping hand. That's all I want to do. She'll teach you how to sew. Margarita, take this cloth. What have you done to identical sleeves? There isn't enough cloth to make another. Well, then let's take the cloth from the front. And instead of that one, we can use another piece of it. But what would the lady do with a dress that has two different halves? Then she can cover it with an apron. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough space in here. We're too close together. That's why I made a mistake. No, it's still the same house. We're the ones who are growing in number. When you get bigger, you take your things and you go someplace else. <laughs> These two rooms are yours. I'm happy you're here. Thank you, Master Podrato. Goodbye, little lucky ones. Goodbye, Master Podrato. 
Petronilla, look. We are doing it all by ourselves. Our very own workroom. What will the other daughters of the Immaculate say? We're doing it for the girls. They have been entrusted to us. Girls, don't forget. Every stitch you make is an act of God's love. By working, we show him our love. By being a little quieter, we can reflect more. <laughs> and now let's get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that you look after girls here. These are my two daughters. I'd like them to stay with you. My wife died a few days ago and I work in the trade fairs. I have no one to leave them with. We take care of the girls during the day only. Nobody's ever slept here. You entrust them to me. Come on in. Don't be afraid. Go on, go on. Say hello, children. Hello. hello. <laughs> From today on, our workroom has become a real home. Why don't you come with me? I'll prepare a bed. I don't know how, but I will. I want to live here with you, too. You already have a family and a home waiting for you. But this is a home, too. You said so yourself. I want to live here with you. Rosina, I'll speak with your father. I'm hungry. <laughs> mm. Yes, but not in our heart. the things they love, how beautiful they are, shining with joy. They will shine even brighter, closer to you, Our Lady Mary. I wanted to talk to you. You have a right to know. I've just come back from Turin, where I met with Don Bosco. You both know him. I'm happy to say that I too am a Salesian. But you won't leave us, will you? And Mornese? And us? Well, I had wanted to stay in Turin and be nearer to him. But Don Bosco told me he has big dreams, very big, and said nothing more about it. Big dreams? That's all he really said, but he gave me something for you. A medal of merry help of Christians. One for you, Petronilla, and another for you, mine. He blessed them himself. He said you should keep praying as well, but above all, to continue your good work for the girls as much as possible. <laughs> I asked if he would come to Mornese. He accepted the invitation.
The girls have asked me if sometimes I can stay over and sleep with them at night. What do you think? They would be happy. I could tell them good night as if I were their mama. But what about Petronilla? Yes, but I'd like to take care of them as well. Well, your home is here with us. Remember that. It's nice what you do for those girls, but remember that you belong here with us. Well, um, so I didn't find what I wanted, but I'll keep trying. I have to be patient. Aren't Mayan and Petronilla coming? It's our meeting today. It's better if they don't come. Their heads are elsewhere. It's all because of Mayan. She's too bizarre for us. And she's dragging Petronilla down with well, her. Well, then. Are we ready to start the meeting, girls? Come in. You asked to see me? There's something wrong, isn't there? Sit down, Mike. Look, I... I don't know how to say it, but it can't go on like this. There's a lot of talk, and what they're saying isn't very nice. Of the Daughters of the Immaculate, you already knew, but it's not just them. Everybody in town is saying, that you want to be in control. I want to be in control? I just want the girls to learn a trade so that they don't lose themselves, lose hope. Don Pistorino, you know how much I care for them. I know. I know. Of course I know. But I'm afraid you're going to have to take some time off. At, at least until things calm down. And where am I supposed to do this? You will go to Valpanasca. Someone will help Petronilla with the girls, I promise you. I know this is a great sacrifice for you. It's as if Jesus himself were asking. In the silence of this farmhouse, in its memories, I choose you. Looking through my little window, I choose you. In this storm that makes me suffer, I choose you. I miss the girls. I don't understand what has happened. Oh, Jesus, heart of my heart, give me strength. I choose you because you have chosen me. Angelis Santi, attorno a te, cantano dormi insieme a me.
So you pass the needle from here to there, and from there to here. Small stitches. I brought my aim back. <laughs> Now on, I'll be sleeping here with you as well. And I also bring great news. <laughs> Wonderful news for the whole village. In a month's time, Don Bosco will come to Mornese with his boys. Don, Don Bosco! And he'll stay until the Feast of Our Lady. <laughs> with his boys? How will we manage? Where will we put them? We'll on? manage it somehow. Well, you could help me prepare my house for them in Borgo Alto. <laughs> your land and your families. May God protect you and make you happy. I pray for you, but you also must pray for me and the boys who live in the Silesian houses. Pray for Don Pesterino, who is doing so much for Mornese. May God bless all of you and good night. Mine. How bold you were to get in the front row, in the midst of all those children. You seemed spellbound. It was as if Don Bosco could read into my heart. I've waited so long to hear his words, you know. Don Bosco is a saint. My heart tells me so, and now I know. Thank you, Don Bosco. I felt very happy today. That's what holiness is, always being very happy. Just like we do with our girls. Don Pastorino says that they too have the oratory on Sundays. While during the week they teach a trade to the boys. And we don't seem to be any different. <laughs> I'd like to tell you something. I have all this land around the house here in Borgo Alto. And it's here that I would like to build the boarding school. The school which I had spoken to you about. This place is so beautiful. Ask for a helping hand from the people of Mornese, and you'll build it. A boarding school here at Mornese is a good idea. Get straight to work, and when it is ready, I will come to inaugurate it. While I look after the Basilica for our mother help of Christians in Turin, you build a boarding school for her children. 
I've met a small group of young girls in Mornese. They do everything that we do at the oratory. Sunday mass, catechism, games, they have fun. During the week, they teach the girls from the village a trade. And so? Well, they've asked for my permission to live in a group if they're able to support themselves. Some time ago, Don Lemoyne told me I should be doing the same for the girls that I'm also doing for the boys. Oratories, schools. And what was your answer? That we would eventually have sisters, but it would take some time. And then I saw those brave girls. I was very impressed, and they made me stop and think. What I had seen and heard in Mornese is exactly what we are doing here in Turin. Well, now I know for certain that it is God's will that we're also to look after girls. I've entertained your views, which are most positive. And it's officially written here May 1871. And this date will remain for historical purposes. For the congregation that I'm hoping to found, I have the approval of the Pope. And as far as the practical aspect, I propose that this institution takes its root in the house that Don Pistorino is currently finishing in Mornese. Hmm. Thank you for leaving us the house. It's spacious. The girls are increasing in number, and the work is as well. I moved quite willingly to Borgo Alto so that I could easily follow the construction. Is there something wrong? I just received this letter from Don Bosco, and it's only right that I share it with you. Come on, let's sit down. <laughs> Don Pesterino. I intend to allocate the boarding school that you are building in Mornese no longer for the boys, but to the girls. The new sisters will be called the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians, like Our Lady of the Basilica we're constructing here in Turin. This basilica is a monument of stone, whereas they will be a monument that lives for the help of Christians. Follow carefully those who obey, even in the little things, that they are not offended by the corrections received and are mortified with joy. These are the sisters that Mary Help of Christians wants. Just think when it becomes known in the village. Everyone is expecting a boarding school for boys. They'll feel like they've been tricked. They may even think it's your fault. I will have to explain, but... You will have to be strong. <laughs> They're silkworms! Here, take the mulberry leaf. All right, let's see how we're doing. Now then, 24 lire from the silk that we sold. From the clothes that we made, 46 lire. All together this month, that comes to 70 lire. <laughs> it isn't much, but it is enough to live on. I'll have to go and ask for work on commission, I think. Dresses to make. We need to become more autonomous. The girls have brought us polenta, flour, potatoes, and even kindling. Between what we do for work and what they give us in exchange for teaching, for the moment, we seem to be self-sufficient. They still care for us in the village, but... When we transfer to the boarding school that was meant for the boys, I really don't know. You don't have to worry. Shortly, we'll have to make a decision that's important. Don Bosco knows what he's doing. I'm cold. I 
too, I'm glad that you're here. Please. <laughs> I've gathered you here today because at this point, you must decide whether you want to be a nun. Don Bosco wants to found an institute. Do you understand what that means? It's a decision that's important and perhaps the decision of your life. You must think about it. Those who do not choose will remain with their family and will continue to do good work in the village. Instead, whoever raises their hand will then choose this path and will become part of the new institute. Very well. For those who choose to live with their family, the superior is Angela Maccagno. You will be called the new Ursulines. Now you are to vote in complete freedom for the one who will be the superior of the new institute. Please write the name on these sheets. Superior is Maria Domenica Mazzarello. <laughs> I cannot accept this. Thank you. But I'm not capable of this. Believe me, I'm not capable of being the superior. Well, then, for the time being, we'll call you Vicar. How's that? <laughs> You'll move into the new building at Borgo Alto. Transfer everything during the night, I beg you. The village is still quite upset about the entire episode. Stay close to me. Guide me. I will follow you. With you, I am not afraid. Papa, this has always been my house. And you will always be my family. In the hour of need, I know I can knock on this door. And I know it won't remain closed. Here we are in this new house that's so big. Think about it. Just today, three girls have chosen Jesus and have asked me to become part of our family. You sanctimonious lot! You'll get tired soon. You won't be able to resist. Nobody will send any more girls to the workroom. You will go hungry. The building was for the boys. Shame on you. Let's go inside. The whole village is against us now. This is another test of strength we offer to Jesus. Mine. And if the families won't send their daughters to our workroom anymore, how are we going to feed the little ones if we don't have any work? Let's not be disheartened by the things they say. If food becomes scarce, then I'll go and ask for help from my family. Let's go inside. We're here because we were asked by Don Bosco. Have you heard that Don Bosco arrived sooner than we had hoped? No one expected him. He's staying only one day, so the profession is tomorrow. They will become nuns tomorrow. Can you imagine how thrilled they'll be, and us too? In fact, they are now preparing the chapel as we speak. I wonder where they will practice. <laughs> <laughs> She reads well. She could do the part of the bishop. Come with me. My daughters, what is it that you ask? 
We, we only, only ask to profess the rule of the Congregation of the Daughters of Mary, Help of Christians. Have you considered what this means? Among the small plants, there is one that gives off the most perfume, the spikenard. For the spikenard to be able to give up her sweet scent, it must be well trodden. Suffer with Jesus and for Jesus. You are now part of a religious family that belongs to Our Lady. The Institute will have a great future if you keep yourselves poor, simple, and mortified. You are the living monument that gives thanks to our mother. The living monument are the daughters of Mary, help of Christians. From now on, you're to call her mother, because she's been the first among you to have faced many difficulties. You're to listen and to obey her. For now, she will be the vicar, because the one true superior of the house is Our Lady. Your lives shall continue, just as before. But now you are brides of Christ. I beseech all of you to be happy. Don't you realize, Don Fusco, that this is the house of Come in. Mother, I'm very concerned. The firewood is almost finished. The cupboards are almost empty. No one from the village is helping us. The villagers are still against us. As far as the villagers, we must have patience and pray for their souls. They will understand. 
As for the firewood, we shall go up to the hill, to the woods of my mother. And as for food, we shall do as we have done on other occasions. We'll all go collect chestnuts. I'm afraid that some novices will not cope with the hardship and the poverty. We must not be sisters in name only, but in fact as well. It is a divine grace for us poor peasant girls of Mornese to have become brides of Jesus and daughters of Mary, help of Christians. The girls have never seen anyone dressed with such elegance. I'm afraid they're very modest. They don't know a word of French. Girls, please come and greet our new French teacher, Miss Emilia Mosca. Good morning, Miss. Good morning. The poverty of the house is great, but the joy that accompanies it is even greater. Here, everything is done out of love. You will learn from the smallest aspect up to the largest. <laughs> Tell me what time it is. Mother, I'm sorry, but I don't have a watch. You may answer me that it is time to love the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is time to love the Lord. Please take care of the girls with patience and infinite gentleness. Mother, the Sorbonne sisters have arrived. Where are they? Down in the garden. Then let's go. We've been expecting you. Thank you, Mother. May I present my sisters? Welcome. I wanted to be a nun with all my heart, but I couldn't leave my sisters at home. They've already lost their mother. I've already told Don Bosco. It's a joy to have you all here. Go ahead. And you? I have a little surprise for you. Shall we go? Morning. Morning. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Amelia. I'd like to speak to you. Certainly. I've been here for a while and I've watched carefully, and I've observed attentively. And what have you seen? That the girls change when they come in contact with your kindness. Emma, for example. She was very ambitious, and did nothing but open and close her trunk full of frivolous things. And she didn't know how to pray. Now she's another person. And also Maria Belletti. She was uninhibited at the beginning, but not anymore. And what else have you seen? The sisters Sorbonne, all five of them. You have welcomed them with your heart. I have seen the unity and harmony that governs this house. And I've seen you austere with yourself, but protective and maternal with us. And you wanted to tell me this? Well, yes. I wanted to tell you that I want to stay here with you from now on. Would you accept me as a novice? I will entrust you with the direction of the school and of the boarding school. <gasps> to me? <sighs> yes. And now you may go. <sighs> Emilia, hmm? I'd like to learn how to write. I still don't know how. <sighs> the snow. 
is falling on the hillsides of Mornese. Mm, what an unruly hand I have. Humility is good for everyone, including me. My handwriting is terribly undisciplined. But I want to learn to write. Why is that? Because I have a rather big task to perform. And I can't do that without knowing how to write well. Like this? I was looking for a convent. No, don't touch it. Not even the trunk, because I'm leaving. <sighs> Katerina, you'll see how we live. Stay for at least a month trial period. Not even for one day. Aren't you here to be part of the religious order? Yes, but I didn't imagine all of this. I was hoping for a convent. What do you see here? I see a lot of confusion. That is true, we are not perfect. Therefore, we are humble, hopeful, and joyful. Do you mind if I tell you something? It's here where God wants you to be. If you go away, what will you say to our Lord? Since you were ten years old, I knew what stuff you were made of. The secret of your work, of your happiness, is just one. The love of God, without holding back. Time passes, and my seasons have been accompanied by the story of your life, Maine, and by the history of the Institute that will continue to grow. It's already growing. Come in. Am I disturbing you, Mother? I know it's a moment of concern for you. No, please. And your trunk? It's in the dormitory. Are you happy now that you've said yes to God? I'm here to tell you that I'm happy. Because this is indeed a convent. But above all, it's a home. And it's a family. Very soon there will be other houses like this one. Thank you again, Mother. I'll return to the courtyard. The girls are waiting for me. I wanted to tell you that a few days ago, on the 8th of October, the first sisters had left Mornese for Borgo San Martino in order to open the Institute's second house. They will bring with them the spirit of Mornese, the spirit of poverty, love and sacrifice, loyalty to the holy rule and prayer that comes from the heart and always bound by acts of kindness. opened eight houses, and you are the first missionaries. In a few days, you will go to Genoa, and from there you will embark together for Uruguay. All the bell towers that you will see between here and Genoa will help you find the way. No happiness. In whatever occasion you find, I recommend you love each other, to forgive each other's mistakes, but always with love and tenderness. Don Bosco has called us to work among the girls throughout the world among the most needy.
I will leave my birthplace forever. Here is where I met you. Here is where you talk to me. And I followed you. I will leave Mornese to go to Nice. I have suffered many times. The death of my younger sisters reminds me that our true home is in heaven. I think about all of them. You are here. And I am here. Mama, with a heavy heart, I have left you and my siblings. Papa is no longer with us. I miss him very much. But now he is even closer to us all. Come in. We finished the carpet that you had started. Do you like it, Mother? It's very beautiful. You were also precise and clever to finish so quickly. <coughs> The builders have completed the work on the new music and art rooms. And today we have welcomed another 15 new girls. They're settling in on the first floor of the dormitory. You have done well. <coughs> you look rather tired, Mother. Perhaps you should rest a little. I would like to accompany the missionaries of the third expedition to the port of Genoa. And then... Perhaps go to Marseille and wait with them until the ship sets sail. Main, the expedition doesn't leave until the 3rd of February. And if you travel, you may catch cold. And with that cough of yours, you must think of all the daughters you have. Petronilla, I don't have daughters, but I have many sisters only. And they're all very special to me in my heart. But the missionaries will need me to accompany them there. has accompanied the missionaries to Marseille. From where they have embarked, and she is now at St. Cyr. She has a high fever and, unfortunately, is not able to travel. Mother. 
My dear sisters, my missionaries, all of you, the distance that separates us is very great. I had hoped to pay you a visit, but an immense sea separates us. Do not be too happy or too sad over anything in this world. For this life is too short. The day will come when we will meet each other in heaven. Be loving and be amazed, always. What you teach through example remains. I die as a bride of Jesus, a daughter of Mary Help of Christians, and Don Bosco. I ask this grace for all of you whom I have loved very much and whom I now love even more. Jesus, you are my strength. If they only knew you as I know you now,